put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. I got this either as a present or I got it on discount, so I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. Hearts War Movie Review. It is the ending days of World War II, 1944. We are in Germany in a prisoner of war camp. Terence Howard plays Lincoln Scott, a black officer suspected of killing a white man. He insists that it was like that when I got here. The law student and law school student and actual protagonist Colin Farrell's Tom Hart is his defense. It seems like an open and shut case. He was right there standing over the deceased. The two hated each other and there was an incident that would very much seem to yeah, to, to motivate Lincoln. Oh yeah, like the guy who freed the slaves. Clever. And the yeah, will will he get a fair trial? And we have a forced ticking clock of them only having a few days for the the trial. Basically, the 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 camp commandant says they have to have the trial in the theater, and in a few days he expects a lot of additional POWs to come in because of current you know war efforts. And he said, you know, the, the Bruce Willis' character says, we'll, we'll raise a billet tent. Nope. Has to be in the theater. And in a few days, another, you know, a bunch of people come in. Then you have to clear the theater. And that means you have to have given the verdict by then. So, yeah, we are deep in Hollywood territory with this one. And actually, the, the Nazis agree to most of what the, you know, what they're asked for, you know, it, all stuff that falls under the, the court martial rules, but nevertheless, they, you know, they don't have to. And, you know, the, at, at first, it's, the, the commandant says, ah, like in your American movies, yes. And, uh, yeah. But, you know, and, and it is very much in, like in American movies, because you'll note that we don't meet a single non-American in the entire POW camp. Like, there's there's another section where there are Russians, but yeah, those those are the two groups that that are there. When in reality, there were, you know, when when you when you read about World War II and it says Allied forces, that's other countries than America, but nevertheless. And the, you know, this, in, in this basically, you know, to, to its credit, all the different nationalities presented are race. Well, I suppose we don't see any racism from the Russians, but they literally have no lines and like a minute or two of screen time. Everybody else, you know, the, the, you know, obviously the Nazis, but also the Americans and the, yeah. Now, the various things do happen before the, the trial and, and the murder, yeah, but that is, 
you know, this is the actual plot. Before that, it's basically we're we're meeting characters, we're seeing what life is like in a POW camp. Yeah. And you know, I I realize that this isn't unique in that aspect, but I do think that it's noteworthy that they don't you know when it comes to the language used about African Americans this does use the offensive language as was used at the time now I have not read the book or anything else by John Katzenbach this is another of the Greg Gregory Hoblet's movies that I'm reviewing and actually he vowed never he would never again do another courtroom, not just movie, scene after Primal Fear. And yeah, this turned him around on that. Now the, I suppose you might say the main antagonist is Colonel Werner Wisser, the Nazi commandant. He, you know, he, he looks at the area and declares, this is Mein Kampf. He is a major character, he's the one who okays the trial, and he has this interesting sort of, he's, he plays chess with, with Willis's character, and basically, he and Willis's character are, they say in the commentary track, are fighting over Hart's soul. And presumably also Hart's heart, and it it is pretty compelling. And you know he, Visser very much wants to prove that Bruce Willis is also racist, in spite of what he claims. And critics have noted that it's rare a World War Two film has such a complex and interesting villain as this. You know, he can be charming, sympathetic, but at the same time he does do these ruthless things and you know, they, they actually they talk about that, I believe also commentary track, that you know, some characters, some, some audience members thought that it would, that they went a little too far or or maybe they just worried that, but you know, at the end of the day he the, the very first thing he does is incredibly ruthless. And it won't be the last thing. And, you know, no matter how nice he might seem at other times, the man is Gestapo. And Bruce Willis has a commanding presence as ever. The... Sam Worthington, not yet a name actor, has a supporting role as well. Is you know when when I rewatched like DVD extras and such for this, I immediately recognized him, and I, you know there was the fraction of a second where I was like, well, why doesn't he have a bigger? Role? Oh right, it's pre Avatar, and the production values are great. Some of the way this has real historical detail and historical accuracy, but definitely only some of the way. But this does really capture, although again, that's some, it's it's there at times, but and especially early on. But at times, this really shows the harshness and brutality of this you know, part of our history, the the violence of war and the inhumane treatment of POWs. The you know, in the commentary they note commentary track they note that these these train cars that they're being transported in, they were supposed to hold, you know, forty people or so and so much equipment. They put sixty five POWs in these train cars. We see them deloused in the nude, in a group, bare, in, in this barely heated area, keeping in mind that this is the dead of winter. There is, you know, 
there's a ton of snow it's clearly freezing and they actually they do use that as a there's there's some interrogation where they take the the boots and socks of you know one of these american military men and yeah that the the yeah i'll i'll get more into that but briefly the you know keeping in mind that the Gen geneva convention which germany had signed you know no d d yeah said you you cannot abuse POWs which you know didn't stop them from doing it to the russians with the in in this movie the or actually no no that's not said in this movie i don't think but you know the russians did not sign the geneva convention and i forget if yeah i think that was actually one of the excuses that nazis used if they're not willing to you know yeah they they were untermenschen as many were and the holocaust did extend to POWs of Jewish heritage in spite of the Geneva Convention saying you cannot kill a POW without you know some sort of like you know if they're trying to escape you know but not just yeah but yeah one of the first things that we see in the film is actually you know Hart taking the boots and socks off a dead man that he had a conversation with a minute ago you know and he he is urged on to do this he isn't comfortable with himself he he hasn't really he hasn't seen the front line he's his father is a senator and he's you know at at no point somehow at no point does bruce willis suggest that hart you know go cry to his senate daddy the but but yeah he's you know he's urged on to t take his boots take his socks they're no, they're not doing him any good put them on while you still have feet to put them on there are these occasional bursts of action which you know realistically there there might be occasion you know the it does take place over some time it's not quite clear although we only ever really see winter so i suppose i don't know the that region well enough but you know at least a few months it could definitely take yeah and that you know breaks up the monotony of life in a POW camp and it is noteworthy this movie could very easily have had far more action if they wanted it to but they did decide this is not an action movie this is a courtroom drama that happens to have occasional bursts of action it can be very tense the score is quite haunting. At times, the dialogue gets really speechy, you know, the, no longer sounding like it's how people actually talk. The, there's, there's one specific speech that they talk about on the commentary track. They actually got this from an actual, like, there was someone, someone wrote, I'm, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but this was something that a US military person wrote during the, the war so someone actually did you know write this out and yeah they when you're sitting there re reciting something like that yeah that's gonna sound like a speech you know when when you write I, th I think it was like uh, yeah like like someone wrote into a newspaper and then they printed it so yeah that's not gonna sound because that's not how people talk, that's how people write. And the movie definitely does do the, the Oscar bait thing some. 
On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 60%, 72 fresh versus 49 rotten. It actually only has a 48% audience. So I, I guess that's in part the, the Oscar Beatty thing that it appeals more to, you know, people in the industry and such than, you know, regular people. And I would say it's it's probably somewhere in between those two that the that that I would put my score. And the Rotten Tomatoes summary says it's well made, solidly acted, and modestly compelling, but there are too many subplots. And the the subplot you know issue has been addressed by some you know audience reviewers saying, well, all of the subplots relate to the core plot. And in my review of Primal Fear, I also noted that, that has a number of subplots. The thing is, ultimately, Primal Fear has more of a set driving plot. And the with Primal Fear, if you removed most of the subplots, the movie would still work. In this there, there wouldn't be that much left if you took a lot of the subplots away. And yeah, in this case, it really, it's, it's, it's really almost driven by the subplots. It's, it's the, the, the subplots are what provide development of the main plot. And yeah, the main plot there isn't that much. It's, it's this trial, and it's the, the most important stuff is actually what happens in between the the trial stuff and yeah those are the subplots and some critics note that it the, the movie doesn't really know what to be that's very true that's one of the biggest problems it has but also note that the characters are not stock on, on the commentary track they note that no character is spotless. There's some some gray, some darkness to every last one of them, and that is very much true. Some critics note that the it's the kind of movie that, you know, might have come out in like the fifties or the sixties, you know, that this Yeah, this thing of oh, but this you know this black man is facing racism amongst white people and yeah. And other critics note that the the conclusion of the film is irritating and implausible. The, that's yeah, an, another of the really big problems is the ending. And some critics say that for everything the movie does right, it does another thing or sometimes even two things wrong. It's paint by numbers, and it's it's very much propaganda. It is you know patriotism, courage, and honor, and it's not exploring these. It's just it's just pandering, and you know this was made during the the period where you know this time not long after 9/11 where you know, not not long enough had really passed for the whole movie to be made about 9-11. So what they would do is do reshoots and have scenes that, you know, kind of, yeah, that, that have this kind of, you know, 9-11 where, where, like, the country has to pull together. And, so, and I don't, you know, what happened 9-11, you know, I just really, I swear it's not actually at all intentional that I record this so close to the the 15 year anniversary of 9/11 but that just happened but but yeah you know what happened on 9/11 was a tragedy and but you know what was done to movies not long after it's just really frustrating you know it's it's 
at the end of the day, if you're not going to explore the the kind of you know what what these concepts mean or what happened, then then you probably shouldn't put it in your movie unless it is just you know and and that's another thing the movie isn't on its face about how amazing the US military is or how you know it's about a um, court martial in a POW camp the 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 US military men are shown to be racist that's so so it's not a movie that's trying to prop up the US military when you when you look at the movie as a whole but then they do still have this element because they want to yeah the, you know the first Spider-Man movie also had a little bit of you know reshoot well maybe more it's been too long since I've watched it it's been a long time since I watched it there's no such thing as too long since I last watched the, for the same Raimi Spider-Man trilogy the the but but yeah it's not it's not going into it it's just going rah rah and if you're going to make that the movie then you should make it clear so that those of us who don't really want to sit there for that can choose not to watch it now the yeah and it's you know it's about heroism and it gets really preachy and one critic said used the term do gooder which is quite appropriate and though it remains an, another critic notes though it remains sober for most of the film the climax is a parade of ludicrous cliches and it tries desperately to please everyone so it panders to both liberals and conservatives both you know going into historical racism but also saying that you know US patriotism excuses all sins and yeah that's that is very much the case with this movie and yeah, the, the movie definitely has its cake and eats it too. And a number of critics note that a soldier's yeah, soldier story, I forget the exact title, is a better movie. I haven't watched that one, but I could completely imagine that it is. And the movie's in part in yeah, the part of the movie is definitely a character study but it can't seem to, s to decide which character it wants to be about and I think again like like I said with, with Primal Fear you can really tell that Gregory Hoplet came from TV because he's spending a lot of time on characters who at the end of the day don't wind up you know really being as important as the amount of time spent on them seems to suggest and if it's a TV show and you have a lot of time then it makes sense to go into more characters than you know it in in TV if you only focus on a few characters it can almost end up feeling like claustrophobic as far as characters go but in a big movie you kind of need it to yeah to focus on the the characters that are the most important and there are there are characters in this a few of them intentionally so but there are characters in this that seem like they're going to be important and get some screen time get some lines and characterization and then they just kind of disappear into the background now and one Credit notes that it has the sanctimony of a film made like this in like the 50s and it's merely rearranging cliches it has too many messages and apparently the book had a bad ending and it you know for the film it got even worse and 
ultimately there are so many twists that it becomes unconvincing and there is so much male fraternizing that it doesn't feel like there is real danger or you know real source of stress in the camp and the critics some of them say it's a lot like Hogan's Heroes some say it's not I again think it's maybe somewhere in between there, there are definitely times where it's yeah and it meanders it, it lacks a singular direction very much but both Willis and Colin Farrell do deliver great performances and it does show the, the multiplane storytelling that you know expertise that Ray Hoblet developed doing TV and and as a courtroom drama in some way to say it's not that special of one it's very Sidney Poitier now Bruce Willis I don't really have a, a problem with him personally I, I love a lot of his work but he does have an ego and it's on full display here he is not the protagonist he is decidedly not he at, at times he seems like a a secondary antagonist he's not even in the movie for the first 20 minutes or so Colin Farrell is decidedly the protagonist and yet Bruce Willis is you know the 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 cover is a, a shot of the you know shot of his face shot of Colin Farrell's face but his face is bigger and takes you know and, and kind of more centered and such and then on some of the covers his face is the only face so yeah and it's like if you didn't if you can't handle not being the 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 main attraction then you shouldn't be taking a secondary, you know, a, a supporting role in the film if, if you can't handle that. And it's not, you know, it would definitely have, the, the, this movie would never have been made the way it is if Bruce Willis had, if, if Bruce Willis was playing Hart, or if, you know, if someone other than Bruce Willis was playing the Bruce Willis role in this, people would be saying that might as well have been Bruce Willis because the the writing is this you know he he does a number of the Bruce Willis things and it's actually it's it's enjoyable in in a so bad it's good kind of way because it really doesn't yeah the the sometimes it does fit but Anyway, yeah, it's his his ego is on full display, definitely. Now, as it is near the end of the war, Germany was running out of you know fit men for war, and so pretty much everyone, every guard on the camp is really young or really old and the the commandant himself is fairly you know middle-aged at the very least he talks about having been in the first world war and you know the in case anyone was wondering he has a very clear war wound he, he has this limp so yeah he wouldn't be of much use to them on the front and he actually he he notes at one point the the funny thing about war wounds not funny haha is that the older you get the less proud you are of them and yeah I, I I'm not sure it's ever said directly that he got wounded in World War One but 
that's all you know he told he was in World War one he says that and we can see that he has this wound I, I would say it's probably from from back then also hence the the line about the older you know he's he's been living with it for you know maybe 20 years or something okay maybe not yeah the the time in between the two and the and and it is very much you know any any time the movie is about Bruce Willis or Visser it is about these two warriors who are removed from the war you know Willis is frustrated that he's stuck in this POW camp and the commandant you know he he has the the kind of position that someone of his you know the he's he's a decorated man so of course he's going to be in charge but as he can't be you know he has to be in charge of something where he doesn't have to be marching all the time so yeah and the movie is an hour and 55 minutes if you don't count the end credits and two hours if you do count them please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content